Let us enter light. Light influences two things. It influences the color. Indeed, if uh, the light has a slightly yellow or bluish tone, it'll change the color slightly. Um, but we'll go back to this in a section specifically about color. The only thing we'll talk about here is the way that light illuminates things, making areas of shadows and light uh, on an object, in this case the mini, the backdrop, etc. There exists a multitude of forms of uh, lighting, each different, zenithal lighting, general light, lateral light, direct light, etc. We'll only breach the subject of uh, zenithal lighting here, as it's the one I use most often, on almost all my minis, and it's the kind of lighting that's uh, most commonly used in the miniature painting community as well. Zenithal light stimulates the light coming from its uh, zenith, meaning from above the mini. We can see with the first two drawings that the half circle is lit up from above, which makes a light area on its top and creates a progressive change of color on its side going more and more dark. Since then, if light is the only source of light on the mini, the mini must be lit in a logical way. We should think carefully about how this uh, Zenithal light will play upon the various contours of the mini. We can see clearly with uh, this third image, this toad, that the light has hit an area not from the front, but on the contours from above. We can see very well that around the belly or the front side, that there's an intermediate area and the lighter area placed on the tops of the contours the darker area is under the contours and on the side to a lesser extent. We can also see on the lump on his neck the highlights are placed on the tops and not on the front while the darker tones are placed underneath. As for the legs we can also see that the light is shining on his thigh and that it creates a shadow at the height of his tibia. As there's a break which projects a shadow on this area, that light comes in again at the level of the feet. The next illustration shows a cub with uh, various surfaces, demonstrating the logic of light, as we saw previously on the leg of the frog. The lit area, the area which faces the light, is the lightest, and the different sides have different colors, depending on the angle they have to the light source. The smaller the angle in relation to the light source, the darker it is. The following illustration is a new example. It's better to have more examples than not enough. Uh, we can see that the light as a whole hits the floating skirt and the shoulders, that the right leg at a greater angle than the left leg with respect to the light source is lighter than the left leg. If we pay attention to the left arm, the one without the sword, we can see that the light appears from above the arm and that it's made up of intermediate tones on the front side and that the area underneath the arm is plunged in shadows. On the following mini, we can see also that the light mostly hits the chest and on the flat areas of the robe. We also need to take into account what's called the degree of curvature, which means that the sharper a curve, the more quickly the color will change on a short distance. On this first sketch, we can see that the dome is lit from above and that the sides aren't curved, and so the color doesn't change. On the following drawing, where we see a sort of palace, we can see that the curve at the top is very slight, and so the light changes very slowly. There is a break with the sides, and so in this part, the color changes quickly. However, the sides don't have a curve, they're completely flat, and so the color doesn't change either. It remains the same throughout the entire length of the vertical section. On the following Oracle of Mini, we can see the progression of change in light according to the degree of curvature. If we look at the thigh, the curvature is slight, and so the change in color should be slight as well. If we look at the fold around the belly or crotch, we can see that the cloth has a more pronounced fold, and so the color change is also sharper. The speed at which the change occurs is the co in the color should be proportional to the sculpt and curvature, the angle and fold made by the sculptor of the, the mini. The following item allows us to see what happens with a sharp angle. It's often more enjoyable to look at an angle that's been highlighted, as we can see by comparing these two images. 
the first with the cube whose edges weren't highlighted, and the other with the cube where the edges were brought with a lighter color. We can see the with the following plastic object that the sharp edges show an acceleration in lighter coloring on one of its corner. This is a visual trick that we can use when painting minis. The rocks on this mini were highlighted following Xenophil Highlight, using a line of very light colors. For the rocks that were placed in a horizontal manner, we can see the highlights being placed at the top. But for the rock that form an angle, notably those of the arc, we can see that the lights been moved slightly in one of the corners, still following our theory of xenophil lighting. This sketch shows us the influence of xenophil lighting on somewhat more complex forms, made up from faces, curves, holes, etc. The more complex the mini, the more elements it has, and the more you have to figure out how it'll fit into its space. Also, managing the placement of lighting has to be done more delicately. It's much easier to do on this mini, which thankfully only has a skirt and muscle, than on a complex mini with loads of detail. We can see that the light on this mini hits mostly on the right arm, thigh, and face. On the photo of the back, we can see that the lower back and the sides are left in darkness, while the back of the neck, the top of the head, and some part of the leg are bathed in light. This picture shows that Xenophil light mostly hits the right leg and the torso. Leaving the left leg and the tibia of the right leg in the shadows. If you look more closely, we can see that with the folds on the right elbow or the right knee, the light hits the contours and leaves the area underneath in shadow, and also that the light's not from a frontal light source. We can see this again on the next uh, mini, notably on the folds of the robe, which catches light on the flat plane facing the xenophil light, and which causes shadow in this area under the fold. We can also see on this uh, spear that the light is placed on top and leaves the area beneath the spear in the shadows. On the following mini of a banker, we can see that our theory of light and curvature is followed. The folds are very sharp due to the skull, and the transition between areas of light and shadows has been made very strong to follow the sculpting of the mini. In the photo of the back, we can see that the cloak has been sculpted much more smoothly and that the blending is much uh, softer than on the blue cloak we saw on the front side. We can clearly see that the folds on the top of the cloak are sharper than those at the bottom, which are just hanging there. Light has more of an effect, making the quick transition between the lighter and darker area much more brutal. And we can also see, on the red part all the way at the top of the cloak, that the light hits the folds facing the xenophil light source much more brutally. With the following Carlos Mini, we can see that all this is nothing more than theory, and that it's uh, worthwhile, sometime, to know when to exaggerate it. As uh, this black and white picture of uh, the same car shows us, we can see that a spot has been put on the face and arms. This is a way of uh, exaggerating the light in order to focus attention on it. A lighter zone catches the eye of the onlooker much more than if it's surrounded by a darker area. This crow shaman also shows that we can bring attention to a face by painting it with light colors and by surrounding it by a darker area, as was done here with the black feathers. This drawing also makes this uh, theory very clear. The eyes come out sharply as it is surrounded by an area of strong light and there's also a contrast between the blue vapor coming out of the red eye. There's warm cold contrast. On the mini right here, Othella is uh, holding the torch. And we can see by comparing the two photos that the highlights were exaggerated on the left leg slightly on the stomach, the chest, and the face, to bring more attention to these parts. Same for this uh, Arlequin Mini, where the light is concentrated on the chest, the face, and the leg, which is moving forward, and uh, which just so happens to catch the xenophil light. There are a multitude of lighting methods, notably lateral light, which we see on this last pictures. This picture shows the face of this hobbit lit up from his left. We can see pretty well that the light from his left lifts up mostly his forehead, his cheek, and the side of his nose, and that this choice of light leaves the right side of the face in darkness.